Hello and welcome to this video. So today we're going to be talking about the GKE policy controller, or you can call this the configsync policy controller. So in the previous videos, we did take a look at how we can install Google configsync, how we can set up config management and GCP and also on our self hosted clusters. So today we're going to be taking a look at how we can secure our cluster using policy controller. So let's get into it. So GCP or GKE provides policy controller as part of the config management resources. So when we installed our config sync in our cluster, if you remember, we did set up policy controller. So before we dive further into it, what is policy controller? So policy controller is a way for you to enforce cluster compliance using objects called constraints. Now it is based off of the open policy agent called gatekeeper. And constraints helps you define what action is allowed or not allowed in your cluster. For example, in our cluster, we can say, oh, we want to require labels on all namespaces, for example, or we can say we don't want privilege escalation on our containers. So you can define what is allowed and what is not allowed in your cluster using the GKE policy controller. Okay. So policy controller comes with a library of constraints that are ready to use. By default, you have most of these libraries or best practices installed. And these are called policy bundles in GKE policy controller. So if you go all the way to policy controller bundles in the documentation here, you will see that we have a good number of best practice policy bundles here that GKE has or sets up by default when you install a policy controller. And something you can do is use this policies to audit your cluster and see where your cluster stands in terms of security. And then you can apply those policy constraints to your cluster if you actually want to implement those across your organization. Okay, so these policy bundles help you meet industry standards, apply best practices, and you can also apply them in different modes. So policy controller supports three different modes in which you can apply those policies. You can apply them either in dry run mode, either in in deny mode or either in, in in one mode as well so in this demo we're going to be taking a look at how we can enable policy controller and install the cis benchmark which is what we're going to be taking a look at in this we're going to be looking at the, the cis kubernetes benchmark and how we can set that up on our cluster and to protect our resources so first of all how do you install policy controller from the previous videos on config sync where we did set this up yeah, it's still the same process. So on our GK cluster right now, if you want to install policy controller, you can go ahead to policies here under config and policy, go to install policy controller, and then you can select your cluster and go through the steps to install policy controller, but I already have policy controller installed. So you can see no clusters are showing up here for me. And so that's one way you can install it directly from the UI. However, I prefer to install it from Terraform. So in my Terraform code I have here, which I showed in the previous video, you can see we have a block here for policy controller where we're enabling policy controller and then setting up some configurations. Basically, this is the audit interval seconds template library installed, which is true. Like I said, policy controller comes with a good number of template libraries. Referential rules enabled, we're setting that true as well because some constraints require some other constraints and dependencies. So this has to be true for those to work. And exemptable namespaces, we're just setting this to GKE backup. This is useful if you want to exclude certain namespaces from having those security policies applied. And just like before, we're synchronizing directly from our Git repository. And there are different ways you can apply these policies to your cluster. You can either use a GitOps model like we're doing here using config sync and sync those policies directly from a Git repository, or you can decide to install them directly on your cluster. Okay. So now I have policy controller set up here and it's synchronized with my Git repository, which we're using and which is this repository config sync and in here we do have our in our policies like gke directory we do have a base directory in here which we're synchronizing from and in here all we're doing is just setting up a basic network policy okay all this does is just sets up a network ingress and egress policy and then the thing we install here is our cis bank now 
this set of CIS benchmarks here are just some of the constraints that Google sets up and manages internally by itself. And all these are available directly in a Git repository. You can see all of the constraints that are built and maintained by Google. So here I just picked two out of the many CIS benchmarks that are available. I'm going to leave a link to the different CIS benchmarks that are available. But here you can see an overview of them. All the different things they check, restrict the use of cluster admin role. All of these have certain functionalities, right? And there's a repository that has all of this in there. I'll leave a link in the description as well, and you can view all of these policies. Okay, but for this demo, all I'm doing is just going to be testing out these two policies. The first one says that I do not want, I, I want to require security policies for all my pods. So any pods that don't have security policies, I don't want that. I want that to notify me and I'm setting the enforcement action here to deny. So it means that means they should block it. Okay. But you can set this to dry run as well, just to audit, audit the status of a cluster against that policy. And then no secrets as ever here as well. I don't want any deployment or any containers to mount environment variables from secret. That's what this policy is for. And right now, since I have config sync set up using the GitOps model, and this is synchronized to my Git repository, as we see here from the main branch. And so therefore, if I go to packages, we should be able to see the resources that are installed. And here you can see my two policies that I'm synchronizing directly from the Git repository and my network policy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is try to install some resources that violates that policy and see how that works. Okay, so over here in my policies directory base, this is the folder that's synchronized. I want to enable Nginx, the Nginx deployment, which is here on the components Nginx. Now let's take a look at it. So it has a deployment, a secret, and a namespace. So here we're just creating the Nginx namespace. Then we're creating a deployment. Now you can see I've commented out the security context because I want this to violate the security policy and show us a violation. Okay. And then the other thing here is I'm doing here is you can see I'm mounting a secret as an M variable in this container, which should trigger that policy because one of the policies that we're setting up is saying we don't want to allow mountain secrets as environment variables and we also want to ensure that all pods have security policies applied okay so what we're going to do now is just enable this like head down here and nginx now let's commit that code let's add all comment it's gonna say fix enable nginx deploy now we're going to push that code. And now let's go back to a cluster and see what's happening. Config sync should detect that change and it should synchronize those changes to my cluster. Now let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to refresh a few times, see when it's picked up. Okay. It's picked up the change. So now that's running, it's going to wait for that to run. So synchronization completed, it says synchronization is completed. Let's take a look at the packages that were installed. And this is still in an unknown state. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the resource that we expect to be synchronized. Now we expect that to fail because it doesn't match the policies that I have configured in my cluster. Okay. So going to workloads and GeneX MC, so you can see our deployment isn't running. Zero pods deployed. And here we have this nice message here. You can see admission webhook violation gatekeeper. Gatekeeper denied the request. You can see the policy that's getting referenced here because container nginx has secret defined as environment variable, which violates the policy that we've defined, right? And security context must be defined for all pods. So you can see this deployment violates those two security policies and therefore it has been blocked. So this is one way you can secure deployment of resources to your cluster that violates your company or organization's security policies. And if we go onto the policy controller dashboard, we shall see or get some insight as to what's happened. So on our dashboard here, you can see we have two deny rules and right now those resources aren't deployed. So this 
audit isn't going to show us the true status because the gatekeeper admissions controller is blocking those resources from getting deployed in the first place. Okay, boy. Something we're going to do next is to switch that enforcement action to dry run. So when we switch it to dry run, the policy dashboard is going to show us all of these violations that we have because those resources are still going to be deployed anyways. So now let's take a look at that. Okay, so back here in our cluster, we're going to fix that gatekeeper issue right now. So head back to a code and let's enforce the CIS policies in dry run mode. The dry run. run. Save that. And the other policy as well. Going to set that in dry run mode. Okay, I have these two policies set in dry run mode. I'm just going to go back and commit those changes. Dry run mode for policy control policies. Okay, we're just going to do that. Now let's push that change. Okay, now we'll push that change. Now doing that, what should happen as a result of this is when our synchronization happens, the policy should now be in dry run mode, which should allow those resources to be deployed in the cluster. And when that happens, we should be able to see violations from our audit from the policy controller dashboard because it's going to be running in audit mode okay so let's see what's happening when we go over to settings synchronized so let's see packages hope it has picked up our change already okay we have synced now which looks good and sync 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 okay let's see if that's done and the best way to confirm that resources have synchronized is if we go to our workloads and we still have a failure here so that's not getting picked up and okay awesome now just refreshing the ui you can see that our deployment has stabilized now we have two pods running and we no longer have the error from the admissions controller because this is now running in dry run mode. Our resources are getting deployed and we also have policy controller enabled so we can audit all of those changes directly from here. Okay, so here on the policy dashboard, you can see we now have a violation, okay? Which is perfect. You can see two in dry run mode and we have one violations. So if we take a look at the violation here by clicking on that, we should be able to see what these violations are. You can see the two policies that are getting violated. So total of two violations. So it has detected both violations now. And then we can review this. And when we want to apply this to a cluster, we can enable that. So that's how you can audit your cluster policies in dry run mode. And when you're ready, you can enable it in deny mode so that the gatekeeper admissions controller is going to block all of those deployments from actually getting deployed in the first place. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know if there are any areas of this video you would like me to cover a bit more or leave comments if you have any questions and I'll get to it. I'm going to leave links in the description for almost everything I've talked about if you need to dive into it a bit further. And don't forget to do so. Thanks and see you guys. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on this channel if you haven't. So you're notified when the next video drops and you don't miss anything.